We are talking about a great miracle that the Lord has done. We hear about Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Before that prolonged time, the Lord used to go to Bethany in the house of Martha and Mary and Lazarus. And they used to welcome him. And we hear one day that the Lord was there, Martha was serving, and Mary was just under his feet, listening to him. And at that time, Martha complained, saying, tell her to come and help me. And the Lord said, she has chosen the good way, the good portion of life. which is listening to him, which is knowing him more, and said to Martha, you are busy of many things, but the need is for one. The need is for one. Then we hear about Bethany, that the Lord was in the last week of his life, the holy week, where he suffered a lot, that he goes to Jerusalem and have so many disappointments. But what is the balance of that? He leaves the Jerusalem, crying on her, and go to Bethany to find the love, to find the care, to find the welcome that makes him to be comforted. And the Bible is very clear that the Lord loved Lazarus, Mary, and the Martha. He said that clearly he loved them. Though, when he loved them, Lazarus one day was sick. He was ill. And they sent to the Lord, saying, your beloved is sick. They didn't even tell him what was going on. But the, just, they didn't even say to him, do something, come, or do anything. Just information. The one you love, is sick. We leave it for you. How much trust is that? How much faith in that? I don't need to say anything. I think when you want to pray and you don't find the words, yeah, you stand before the Lord and say, Lord, you know everything. You know. That's enough. That's enough. In this occasion and in other occasions as well, requests be made to the Lord, prayers be made to the Lord, but the Lord 
did not do it straight away. We pray. We have promises from the Lord. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have had it, it will be yours. We have the promise. But with the promise, the Lord sometimes is late. Is late. Lazarus is ill. Tomorrow is so ill. After tomorrow he is terribly ill. And then he passed away. And to what the Lord was doing. Did he know? Did the Lord know that Lazarus is really deteriorating badly and he is going to die? Yes. Because he said to his disciples, our brother Lazarus is sick. is asleep. And they thought he is just needs healing. But then the Lord told them frankly, he is dead. He is dead. Then the disciples, one of the disciples said to the Lord, let us go and die with him. Because in Judea, they were trying to stone him. And they were afraid to go back to Judea. But when the Lord said, we will go back, they thought they would have trouble. But the Lord said to them, I am glad. I am glad that I was not there. Are you glad, Lord, because Lazarus died? Are you glad because of the grief they had? Yes, I am glad. Why, Lord? Why are you glad in a disaster? It doesn't match when you saw them, you cried, isn't it? But the Lord is saying, I am glad. Why? Because this illness is for the glory of God. And this illness for your faith to grow. For your faith to grow. The delay of the Lord in answering our prayers is not that he is ignoring what we say, but he is doing it in his time, in his wisdom, for your faith to grow, to see more and more of the glory of God. So please be patient. Be patient. The Bible tells us Patience makes us perfect, lacking nothing. But be patient and trust that the Lord can do anything, anytime. Nothing is impossible for the Lord, even if he is late. I remember Zechariah the priest and his wife prayed for a son. Probably when they were 20 or something like that, after they got married. 25, no answer. 30, no answer. 40, no answer. 50, no answer. So when they were about 50, they said, that's it, we pray no more. The Lord waits more. 60, no answer. 70, no answer. 80, no answer. When they were nearly 90 years, we 
eight years, the angel of the Lord stand by the Kariah, the priest, and say, your prayers have been heard before the Lord. Yeah. Which prayer? Which prayer? The angel. I, I am maybe for my arthritis? Maybe? No, no, no. Didn't you ask for a child? A child? A child? We asked about it. About 60, 70 years ago. It's, it can't be. The angel of the Lord became very upset. He said, I am Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, and you don't trust me. Your prayers been heard. Trust. And because you didn't believe it, you will be silent to know that your prayers been heard and I am talking the truth. Don't stop praying till the Lord answers you. Don't stop praying till the Lord answers you. When the, then the Lord took the disciples and went to Bethany and Martha came out to see the Lord. And when she went out to see the Lord, Martha was the older one. He, she said to him, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. If you would have been here. Martha, Martha, your brother will be risen. No, I know, I know, Lord, I know, your Lord, whatever you ask from the Father, he will give it to you. Do you believe that he will be risen? He will rise. I know he will rise in the last day. She says something and she believes in something else. Can you see? I know whatever you ask the Father, he will do it for you. Perfect. Can you believe that he will raise him from the dead? No. No. He will rise in the last day. We sometimes talk a lot, but we believe differently. We need to believe what we say and say what we believe. Yeah? And then the Lord said, I am the resurrection and life. I am the resurrection and life. Whoever believes in me, will not die, will not die. But if he died, he will rise again. He will rise again. This is the hope for every one of us. This is the hope for every one of us. We, we need that great hope. We need that trust and faith in the Lord that nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible. Healing, he can heal. Death, he had victory over death, and he can raise the dead from their death, their tombs. When we went to Israel, we went to Lazarus' tomb, and we were so surprised that Lazarus came out of the tomb because it is very deep and he was tied up with all the um, shrouds around him. And it was 
impossible to go upstairs. But the power of the Lord didn't only raise him from the dust, but brought him up out of the tomb too. Then the Lord wept. The Bible tells us something very specific. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Was troubled. Groaned in the spirit. I wanted to know what is groaned in the spirit means. You know in the Greek language. The meaning of groaned in the spirit is like what? You know the horses, yeah? When they cry, they snort. The horses, they snort. Yani, yani expressing very deep pain and suffering. Groaned in the spirit means he was really, really sad and suffering from inside. Why? You just said to the disciples, you are glad. Why now you are groaning? Why are you sad? You know what? Why do you cry when you know that you will raise him from the dead? Why do you think? Because death, the Bible tells us, is the last enemy. Is the last enemy. We have many enemies, but death is the last one. It's the most horrible one. And when the Lord looks at death, he looks as at an enemy. He groaned. He was troubled. He wept because his enemy, the death, has captured all his children. The whole world. We, not, we haven't been created to die. We haven't been created to die. It is Satan who entered the sin to the man. And when man accepted it, he died. And Satan was taking everyone away from the Lord. So it was a big fight between Satan, death, and the Lord. And the Lord is crying that we all die. But then, but then, he is not crying actually like Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha were crying, and the Lord was crying. Mary and Martha, even the Greek word is different. Mary and Martha crying, the meaning is willing. I think it well, yeah, willing, yeah. The Lord was crying quietly. Quiet, sad. Not because the death of, not because of Lazarus, because he knows he will raise him from the death, but because his enemy, death and the Satan, had the opportunity to capture his children and to arrest his children away from him. Then the Lord cried.
cries loudly and say, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus will rise up. And Lazarus will come out of the tomb, carried, though he was tied up with the coffin and the shroud around him. But he was risen. He was risen. The Lord declares here victory over death, victory over Satan. And it happened not only at Lazarus' tomb, but on the cross. On the cross, Satan was approaching the Lord to arrest his soul too. But Satan could not know that life cannot die. The Lord is life. He cannot die. And what happened? The Bible tells us that Satan was going down like what? Like lightning. Yeah? Death died. Death conquered by the Lord. Death been finished ever lastingly. It has been defeated by the Lord. And that is why we are not afraid of death anymore. Because we know that we will be risen with him. In this miracle, the Lord is giving every one of us the great hope, no matter how our weaknesses are, no matter how our sins are, the Lord can raise you from the slavery of sin, from the death of sin, from the bondage of sin. Just you need what? You need to bring yourself to the Lord. Just you need to tell the Lord I want every one of us to stand before the Lord in his prayers and say to the Lord, the one you beloved is sick. Can you stand before the Lord and say to him so? The one you beloved is you. The one you beloved is sick. Can you help me? Can you rescue me? Can you save me, Lord? He will. If he has risen Lazarus, he can raise you too. Is that true? Is that true? So why, why are we living in our weaknesses, in our sins, in our slavery. Please, the Savior is here to raise the dead and to raise you too. Don't give up. Don't give up. Come to the Lord and the Lord will be glorified in you. Can you trust what the Lord is saying? Can you trust what the Lord is saying? That your weakness, 
is not that bad. It is for the glory of God. Your illness is for the glory of God. Your troubles, your problems are for the glory of God. This resurrection of the death makes no one have excuse to lose hope. Losing the hope is the worst thing in the world. I think those who get depressed, why? Why people do get depressed? They can't find an exit. They can't find a way out. They are trapped. They are trapped. But today, the Lord is saying to every one of us, The, the Lord is saying to every one of us, you are not trapped because I am there. You are not trapped because I can rescue you and save you. May our Lord Jesus Christ give us all this hope this faith, this trust in the love of the Lord, that everything we are troubled with is for the glory of God, is for the glory of God. May we all experience that glory in our problems, weaknesses, illnesses, and even the departure of our beloved ones, Lord, to the Father. Amen. Amen.